so hey everyone. I'm uh, Sylvain, so I'm a, a French PhD student. Uh, and I will talk about uh, my uh, work, uh, like for my thesis. So this is a prototype I, I've been developing. Uh, before presenting this prototype, um, I, I will talk about the context of my uh, PhD. And um, I want to emphasize that I'm working with uh, uh, game development studios. So uh, this will uh, maybe lead to uh, uh, use the, this AI that I'm developing to for the game. So yeah, hopefully it will end up in a commercial game. Uh, so the context is that uh, strategic reasoning for uh, virtual agents is open uh, quite full. So we have a lot of uh, inconsistent behaviors or maybe uh, not really intelligent behaviors. So we want to try to make more emergent behaviors. Uh, so the state of the, the, state of the art uh, uh, for, for the techniques of uh, behavior are uh, these. So they all have their advantages and uh, disadvantages. So I, I won't um, like detail all of them. But the main thing is that for most techniques, you have to uh, specify the use cases. Like uh, if you are in this situation, you have to do uh, this, uh, etc., which can be time and resource um, consuming. So the main idea is to be able to specify the game rules, uh, general game rules, and then the program should be able to uh, generate a, a focused uh, rule for the specific state. And uh, what we want to do is use logic-based methods, which are almost absent from uh, the state of the art. But uh, recently, uh, I mean, for the last years, uh, we, I have seen some examples of, uh, of techniques. So here are some uh, examples that I've noticed. Uh, these are most, uh, for the most part, academic projects. Also, I have seen uh, some being adapted in uh, small project games, but they're not still uh, AAA games. So I don't know if they are uh, ready for the industry yet, but hopefully uh, we will be able to make some for, for the futures. So yeah, this is my observation. Uh, so very roughly, um, Declarative logic programming help uh, and, um, intuitive rule representations. So it's intuitive for the game designer to uh, specify your rules. Like a human in the same room as the monster or the pit uh, will die. So this is a rule. And we can directly translate it in uh, in logic programming. So this is prologue, a simple, uh, quite simple rules that we can do. And the goal is to uh, specify all the rules of uh, one game into uh, polar rules, rules like that. Okay, so and we want to add ontologies and knowledge inference so that uh, we can deduce uh, facts from uh, prior facts that we uh, already um, told the, the game so that it can uh, infer new facts and uh, reason. So there we, we say that if X is an element, uh, if it's, uh, it's an object or a being, etc. So we can deduce that a dog is an animal, uh, which is a being, which is an element of the game. So we only have to specify dog and we can infer a lot of things. And this is uh, the resulting in, in prologue. So one of the things that we want to represent is uncertainty so that uh, with classical logic uh, programming, we only have um, two truth values, which is true or false. And we want to represent um, uncertainty, so a third truth value. So we will uh, we, we have used uh, the well-founded semantics. Um, so it introduced a new uh, truth value. And uh, we can also manage uh, contradictory information uh, when like some NPC says something and another NPC uh, tells us another thing, which is not uh, compatible. Uh, we hopefully can deal with that. So this is uh, resulting in, in prologue. Um, so this is the resulting architecture that we use. So the client, the player, can, he can be uh, multi-clients. 
uh, we integrate directly the prolong engine to uh, the prolog into the game engine. So for this project, we choose uh, Unity because the, the game development studio that we are working with is also using uh, Unity, but it should be compatible uh, in theory with uh, all the other engines. And then we make our ontologies in uh, in Prolog. So all the um, logical and declarative aspects is in Prolog. We don't have, um, the goal is to separate them so that it can be modular and it can be usable again in other games. Uh, for the interface between a Prolog and the game engine, uh, there have been a lot of uh, projects for uh, linking the, uh, both of them, but um, unfortunately, they are more or less not very updated, and uh, they have had the drawbacks. So we chose to develop our own solution, uh, which is basically doing uh, a client-server interface with uh, over TCP IP, uh, which is hopefully not um, too consuming in terms of resources and uh, real time compatible. Also, when adding multiple agents, we see that uh, it starts to slow down, but uh, we will uh, have a dep um, optimization phase to try to correct this. So the prototype is based on the Wumpus world. Uh, some of you may be familiar with this game. So it's a uh, like basic uh, logical game uh, from the book of Russell Nolbeek, uh, which is a base book for, for AI. So we use this uh, project as a fast forward uh, prototype so that we can uh, develop it easily and test uh, the logic on this game. So basically, an agent uh, explore caves and he try to find the gold uh, with uh, without dying. So we by avoiding the pits and the monsters. So here are the view of the world. So you have the agent here. Uh, he's a, ten a stench. So the monster here is called the Wumpus. Uh, it has stenches all around him. And for the pits is the same. It has some breeze. On him, so you can detect a uh, stench uh, with the wumpus and the same for the pits. So basically, it's a bit like the mind sweeper. You can detect uh, things by exploring other cells. Okay, so th this is a typical game situation when you have information about your game. So you visited this cell, this cell, this cell, etc., and you know there is a stench in this cell. So you can, uh, via a rule, deduce that uh, there is a monster in the next cell. So maybe it's not very clear like this, so I will uh, show it directly in, in Unity. Okay, so yeah, I expanded a bit the map, so it's more interesting. So we have an agent starting in this cell. So in green, um, it's the cell that the agent knows to be safe because there are no stench nor breeze in his cell. And the orange is the most important. It's the uncertainty that we introduce with the full well points in semantics. So the agent doesn't know uh, that it's safe or that it may be a danger. Uh, it doesn't uh, expand in the whole map because otherwise it would be uh, uh, too resource consuming. But uh, we can like maybe do this in the future. Uh, so when I play, I remove to uh, the next cell and it starts to, to get visited. The cyan color is visited. So I can yeah, play like this. Uh, I have uh, auto mode, which is better. Yeah. So I'm detecting a pit here, which is uh, red, uh, detected as red. And I can detect new, new monsters and yeah, so in this version, the, the agent doesn't kill them, uh, but it, it's possible to kill them if, if we change um, some uh, personalities about the engines. So basically, we upgrade the base version of, of uh, the Wumpus, uh, which is a small uh, world like we, see, uh, we saw earlier, uh, to try to make new, um, new, uh, how to say, like new personalities where the agent doesn't kill uh, the Wumpus for some times, 
uh, sometimes he explores the whole map be before going back to the start cell. And uh, one of the things that we tried is to add multiple agents. So, sorry. I will add them, let's say, uh, three. So that it doesn't get slow. Okay. And in this version, yeah, they should be able to stay. So in this version, they share the, their knowledge about the world. So this agent knows that this place is safe. They know there is a monster here. So they all share the same uh, version of the game. Uh, we could have made it so that they are concurrent agents, so they don't share the same visions. So this agent just picked the, the goal here, and we, he will go back to uh, the original starting place. So get out of the cave and uh, it will, uh, yeah, the game stops there. So basically, uh, one of the next step is to try to um, control one, one agent per thread. So we can do multi-thread uh, programming and hopefully improve the performance. Yeah. So, and um, what I want to do is uh, make even more complex behavior so that, uh, yeah, I didn't detail all of them here, but um, we want to make more complex behavior with uh, the ontologies, like making one, uh, one um, adding one object should influence the world uh, more than actually it actually does now. And we want to formalize it so, so that the interaction between ontologies generates even more uh, complex behavior. And uh, yes, the future next step is to implement this, uh, this approach to uh, Waco factories. So this is a small development studio in, in France uh, into their commercial games so that uh, we'll be able to confront with uh, real world uh, like uh, challenges. And uh, then we want to make logic programming easier to use for game designers outside of academia, uh, which is an actual uh, big problem. So I think this is one of the reasons logic programming is not really used in uh, uh, the industry. So that um, one of the, on one first step would be to make a Unity asset uh, out of this. So this is possible. And to make it as general as possible so that a game developer can use uh, the asset for their own game without um, much knowledge about logic programming, which they don't usually, usually have. And yeah, thank you for, for your attention. If you have questions.